<laughs> What's going on, man? Shout out to the real Tracy Lee. How you doing, man? I'm good, my brother. How about yourself, man? Yeah, I'm all right, man. All right, shout out to the real. How you doing, man? All, all is well, man. You know, we keeping it pushing, man. You know, trying to, trying to get back to normal see. You know, it's not going to ever be normal, no. We here. Congra Congratulations on Glory. Oh, appreciate it. I can't wait to receive my personal, oh, yeah, my yeah. personal copy. Um, you know, I done tapped in and what I can tap into online. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nah, you're going to put that. You got the, uh, the manuscript. We're going to talk about that. You got the, you got the book, man. That's, that's, that takes it to another level. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where you really get to dive into the lyrics. All of the lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Along with the journal entries and all that. So, so yeah. So, how, how did you come up with that, this concept? Oh, man. Um, I mean, being in the pandemic, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I think what what this thing did for, for some of us, especially us, us, us as, as creatives, you're creative as well, is that you, you kind of had to sit back and kind of figure some things out. You know what I'm saying? You had to sit back and kind of understand that, you know, it wasn't moving in the same direction that it once was. So mm. what what do you do? You know what I mean? Like, you know, with, 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 with every tragedy, there's triumph, you know what I'm saying? There's always a silver line in this shit, you know what I'm saying? So that we found the silver lining. We not only, you know, was able to create, you know, the things that we do, which is music, but it's like, all right, let's present it in another way, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's kind of like a page out of the old school book, like when we used to get the inserts and the CDs and the inserts and the albums, you could read the lyrics and all that. Well, we're in a digital space, you don't get that no more. You know what I'm saying? So why not create something that brings that back, but then put it in book form? Like, and this is, you know, shout out to my wife. You know, she has a publishing company. So she was like, you know, not only will we take the lyrics and put them in book form, but we also going to give them photography that kind of speaks to every song. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And from that, we're going to give them journal entries to give people insight as to where you are and what you were thinking about when you actually wrote these songs. So we broke it down into 12 chapters, gave you the lyrics to every song, which is 12 songs on the album, and then gave you journal entries for each joint along with photography to kind of capture and pull everything together. You know what I mean? That's beautiful. I think it's a beautiful concept. And I like your music. I like the songs. You're still getting busy. Yeah. You're still getting lyrical. Yeah, yeah. But listen, listen, listen. You you had some things to say about Noriega. We got to say something. Of course. So I got I got to put this out there. So you think you can take Nori on a song? Listen, I would love to do a song with Nori. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I I think we could we could make something crazy. But the thing that and 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 I'm sure you heard you know my response that you mm -hmm. know if you think somebody got got the best of me on the mic then that's fine. That's your opinion. I don't have a problem with that. But but the, but I think what kind of rubbed me the wrong way is that you used your platform to kind of call me out kind of twice out of nowhere. Like, I, <laughs> I was even on your radar. Like, uh, uh, mm. I understand that. I understand yeah. the gutter shit. Direct to the right. point. And right. B.I. was more like a direct, but B.I.'s a bad now. But this who, who, who did B.I.? He body some nigga on in Philly. He ain't never had a, um, what's his Tracy name? Lee. Oh, man. That Tracy was terrible. Lee. Yeah. Like, Tracy Lee should have that come out. To Kim and C's events. He should have said, he should have <laughs> manned up. Like, somebody should have told him no. <laughs> no. <laughs> a big feature's not man, that yeah. important yeah. right yeah. now. It still worked. The feature still worked. Yeah, the feature still worked. I'm you, Tracy Lee. I'm sorry. That song still worked. It killed him. That was more. You never heard from him again. Nah, nah. You got big kill you. That record worked. I got speak in his defense. He's a lawyer. He quit rapping and went and took his lawyer. He won. He won. He won. Helped him. He won. He quit rapping. He won. 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 He you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, like where did that even come from? That that sounded like to me, and I could be dead wrong, but it sounded like to me that this is something that was bothering you for years that I did a song with Big. And then so this you took the opportunity to say, hey, well, you know, since you got on there with Big, he 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 ate you, he ate you up. You know what I'm saying? And 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 he walked and even went to so far as to say that he made me retire from doing music. And so I'm like, all right, cool. You from say the music. Well, yeah, I ain't never hear that one. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, man, because cause the first time he said it, I think, um, not I think, but uh, Jada was on the show along with C's. And so, you know, after he was like, yo, you know, Big got on the record with, oh, Tracy Lee from Philly. Yeah, yeah, he bodied Tracy Lee. And then, you know, Jada had to tell him, 
Like, nah, man, he, he's an attorney. Like, he didn't, you know, to retire. He went and, and um, you know, got a law degree and became a, an, an attorney. Yeah, life representing, you know what I'm saying? And so, life is a journey. But I got to ask you this. Do you feel like you got ate up on that song? Not at all. Not at all. I mean, Nobody you did your thing, but, but you know why? Because he never really mentioned Dre in L.A. and all that. Or where you're from, west or east coast Squeeze toast, leave most in the blood they layin' in Axe trayin' them Oh shit, I suppose it's time to go stitch Flip a line and get the show lit you And he yeah. did it on your song, so that was kind of crazy I mean, I, I put it to you like this, brother Like, when you an MC you mm -hmm. know, And like, well, at least I think y'all gave it in, I got it in It was a, It's a beautiful song Listen, and it's who we come from If you an MC, you're not gonna mm -hmm. get on the mic and eat me up at no time. You know what I'm saying? I don't care who you no are. No time. I got the respect mm -hmm. for Big. I love that brother. He taught me some jewels in the, in the studio with regards to the business. But he knew as well as I knew. When it comes to the microphone, it's a whole different animal. Like, you going to try to destroy it just like I'm going to destroy it. So, you know, I know. To answer your question, absolutely not. Yo, because people don't know. And the thing is, that song, and then when they play it sometime on other versions, they blurt out certain parts of the song. They took you out of certain parts of the song. So it's kind of crazy. And you said that was his last, that was his last song. It was, it was, the, it was the, no, it was the last feature that he did outside of Bad Boy. Then the oh. next one he did after that was the, um, was the victory joint on the No Way Out album. And he did mm -hmm. that the night before, you know, the, the murder. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was his last outside feature. You know what I'm saying? Mm. How did you get that? How did you get that? Uh, Mark Pitts. Mark Pitts. Mark Pitts. Yeah, Mark Pitts was, uh, he's the head of Bosch Storm, still is, and he's also the president of, 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 not the president of, the president of RCA, right? So, mm -hmm. I, this is his label. He signed me. Me and Mark went to, went to, uh, went to Howard together. But Mark mm -hmm. was also, Big's manager. Um, Mark was uh, headed by Storm, so it was just a natural thing. Like, okay, I'm gonna get my manage with the cat that I signed on my label, and we gonna put it together and make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Now, party time. P party thing. That's a hard song. Oh, it's party time, having a party. Come on. And I and, and you know, from from even from the big song. For, for I don't know, because I'm from New York, so maybe I was a little kid looking up. Both of those songs is big in my life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those are big records in my lifetime. Like, those are classic moments. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You big to me. So, but you said, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't promoted. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying, you didn't get paid the way you should have been. Right. And and what happened, man? Because By Storm went on. I don't know. I hear the name By Storm, By Storm, but they think of you when they hear by storm. I they mean, don't think of Mark Pitts, I'm just saying. <laughs> by storm, like they call you Mr. By Storm. You Google it, I, Mr. By Storm, that's you. <laughs> hey, you know, cause I, I think it's because I was the first cat that he signed, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and because I was the first cat that he signed and, and you know, he had other acts on his label at the time. But like you said, the theme is party time was really the song that kind of set everything you know, like, was the, really the jump start and the catapult for, oh, well, who's this cat? And who is by Storm? And who? And so it's the natural association. Like, if this going to be the first record that you hear and the first things that you hear on this particular record is by Storm, huh? you know what I'm saying? And all of that stuff we was doing in the, in, in the beginning of the record and in the middle of the record and at the end of the record, we were kind of branding it, you know, from the gate. So even now, 25 years later, you know what I'm saying? You're still going to associate by Storm with me and that record. You know what I'm saying? It's party time. You know what I mean? So that that's what that was. They should give you half of that company. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, yo, so was that always a party record when you wrote it? Or did you have it from like a long time ago? I know when I used to rap, sometimes songs land on certain beats and it works. So yeah. was that always a party record? Nah, let me, let me tell you. to that beat? Uh, listen, shout out to Derek D. Angeletti because before I got signed, I was always like I was I was a, a really a battle MC. I was a lyrical battle MC. Like, and there's a difference between you know rhyming like that 
and then rhyming to make a record. And so Dot was the one that kind of like, you know, because I when we first when we first did that track, okay, so I told Dot, I said, okay, I want to use pieces of a drum. Um, and, and the joint is called Mount Airy Grooves. It's like, it's like, it's like, Zen, 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 zen. That's my own area groove. So that all comes from Philly. So I told him when we get signed, or when I get signed, the first record I want to do, I want to make sure that I represent my city. So he took that sample, and then he took another sample uh, from uh, world famous Supreme Team, and then he had the hook uh, from Schoolhouse Rock, and everywhere the white crew go, you know that they're now. He flipped that, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. And then so when we created the song. I was attacking the joint like a battle MC. Like I was tagging it, attacking it like da 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 He was like, no, 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 no. Chill, chill, chill. <laughs> you gotta do is let the record breathe. Let it breathe. And that's the most valuable lesson that I got as a sound mm -hmm. artist. And even to this day, it's like subconsciously in the back of my mind when I'm attacking beats. It's, it's, it's kind of like you got to compliment and the instrumentation got to compliment you so that people get the full essence of a record. Now, if it's something <clears throat> you just want to get your lyrics off, then you pick a, a particular beat that's just a drum and you just go at it. But when you're trying to make records, you got to let it compliment each other. So I went back and I attacked it a different way. Now, if you listen to the lyrics, though, the lyrics are still on some bar heavy. Nah, you went in on that. You went in yeah, on that. You, know? you laced that. You killed that. I was just listening to it all over again, like 30 times. You went in on that. So, you so, killed that joint. So we, we spaced it out, man. And um, it, it came off lyrically. But at the same time, it became you know, a situation where we could party to it, where people can memorize the lyrics and have fun with it. But if you listen to the beat, the beat is just, it's still hard. It's still the beat is hard. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud. <laughs> I, can see, I can't wait to see who's going to do it next. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Somebody going to dig it. They got to do it next, man. Yeah, no. Shout out to who's next. You heard it right here. Exactly. No, but I, I think either last summer or two, two years ago, Jada, and um, this other cat, they got on the joint and they put a video out and all that. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, they try. I remember, okay, I'm going to give you an exclusive. So when that beat was made, I got a call from Dot and Puff and the Locks, right? Mm. They was in the studio. I think Mace was in there too. But they called me like midnight. And Puff and Dot is on the phone. Yo, they want to They want you to come down here and battle for the beat. They, wanna, they want you to come down out for that track because the track Get out is crazy of here. and i was like man i'm not coming down there and battle no black friend. that's my track that's it you know what i'm saying so but but that's just how hot it was everybody wanted that joint they wanted yeah, they, it. Oh, other people wanted it you know what i'm saying so so what with the relationship with puff and after things went sour we're gonna get back to that because you know you got one education theme on that why wouldn't you, you know, why wouldn't you know with that relationship, you know what I'm saying? Why wouldn't you continue on with all the people you knew? You knew you knew the mad rapper, I had to say that. Shout out to the mad rapper. Yeah. You knew the mad rapper, you went to school with all of these people, you mingling. And even when you just cause you was just introduced in the industry and you was with all the heavyweights, Buster Rhymes. Mm -hmm. You know, you're around Kanye in his mm -hmm. beginning stages. Mm -hmm. Like you around great people. You're affiliated. Your name is affiliated with all this greatness. Mm -hmm. Why not and just keep going? Cause cause to be honest, I I figured out <clears throat> okay, so I gotta take you back to take you forward, right? So I have been trying to get a deal since the eighties. You know what I'm saying? I, I wrote my first rhyme in like 1981 or 82, something like that. I was, you know, shopping for demos in the mid 80s, sending it to Def Jam record companies back in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? And so it took me from then until 97 to get my deal. And when I got my deal, it was like I made it right. I thought this was it. I thought, you know what I mean? But then you get in this business and you realize it ain't what you thought. You realize it's it's five percent, ten percent music. You know what I'm saying? Ninety to ninety-five percent politic, ninety to ninety-five cent uh, percent shenanigans, ninety to ninety-five percent uh, uh, business oriented, which is fine, but it's not playing on an even playing field. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I get in this business and I figure out this ain't what I really signed up for. This I, I signed up to just make records, to be the illest MC I could be. And I wasn't really not only prepared, 
but and soon soon I got prepared and I'm prepared now. But I just didn't like it. I didn't mm -hmm. I didn't like the, the the mentality of the people, the majority of the people. I didn't like, you know, the 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 objective, you know what I'm saying, of what this business had had conditioned people to believe, you know what I'm saying, the type of and the type of situations that you had to put yourself in and the type of records that you had to make in order to be successful. I just wasn't with that. And see, and I always and and I think it's partially my fault because even growing up, you know what I'm saying? Even, you know, being in the neighborhoods and be, it's like I always went in my own direction. Like I never really got down with the, the cool kids at the lunch table. I never really, I never really did that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I, mm -hmm. and it's almost like I did it intentionally. If I see some shit is too popular, I go left. Mm -hmm. If I see too many niggas, I go. I'll just go away from that shit and either do my own thing or start my own thing. So that's what happened with me being in this business. I just didn't want to play that game. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I you know, whether you want to say I was built for it or not, that's discretionary. But I just, no, I wasn't even thinking about that. You did it. Life, that's that's life. Nobody can take that. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. Shit. Many people died nameless. <laughs> you know what I'm Word. <laughs> So I don't care what none of that stuff say. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> if they talking about your story, whether it's good or bad, you know what I'm yep. saying? Yep. Whether you feel like I ate up a big, you, you did songs with Bust to all these people, yep. and you did that straight out the gate. So that's why it was kind of crazy that then you kind of went off the radar. So tell people what happened. I heard about the $1 publishing yeah. story. Yeah. But like I said, it's an interview we knew. And like I said, you got to put it out there because oh, yeah. I'm going to stir this thing afterwards. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know no, no, absolutely. No, you got to ask that question. Um, so, so, again, you go through these trials and tribulations of the game and you start to see things that you never thought existed or you didn't even think about. And so once you start seeing things, un, you know, reveal themselves and you figure out, oh, and and then I got dropped, right? So I I, I was signed to to Boss Storm, and then Boss Storm left and went to the face. But Universal kept me, right? And so while at Universal by myself, I Storm I had nobody in the building, right? Because Boss Storm was really that that go between with you know the the representation of Universal and 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 ourselves and trying to you know. Uh, uh, persuade, you know, what records should be released and how we should come out, nah, nah, nah. so when that's taken away, it's like Universal doesn't really have an interest in Trey Lee, because here comes Nelly, here comes Cash Money, so all of the interest and all the money goes over there now, you know what I'm saying? And so he's in here by itself, no representation, da 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 that they eventually dropped me in 2001. And so from 2001 to 2003, we trying to figure this shit out, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, one of the things that happened during that time is that I had, and, and, and I'm saying all this to get you to where, uh, uh, how we got to, you know, 2003 and me becoming an attorney. So when I signed my deal, this is some of the naivety again, not knowing and understanding the business. I hired a corporate attorney as opposed to an entertainment attorney. And so when I signed that deal, not to say that the deal was bad, because the deal was kind of standard for back then. I got 10 points. I mean, it's it's still, let, let's be clear, though. It's still highway robbery to an artist, but it was standard according to what, it wasn't like I got nothing off the record, right? But I got 10 points. But what is standard? Because when I see some of your interviews, I'm gonna tell I heard you. numbers like 10,000, 10,000, yeah. and I can do that on the street. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna, I'm gonna so, See, that, that's the conditioning of the industry. See, the industry leads you to believe that you get 10 points back then. This was 90s, in the 90s. You get 10 points off a record, that that's a solid deal. Well, shit, that's 10 cents off of a dollar. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is off a dollar. Now, I understand that they give you the advance and all of this other stuff to create the record, but... What did you get on your advance? 50000 I got 50000 50000 What did you do with it? Actually, you know what, bro? Were you smart back then? I want to know. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah. All right. No, nah, I didn't. No, nah, I, you know, because my mom's man, she was, she was hit like she got me hit to all the economics and how to save and all of that kind of shit early. So we, you know, we had a little fun. You know, what I'm saying? put some away too. So you know, I lived off of that. Not only that, but the show money and all that. But nevertheless, I, I got an entertainment attorney to negotiate the deal. And once he got his cut from negotiating the deal, my man disappeared. I, I I never saw him again. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I'm saying that is because 
when I signed that deal, I got a copy of the, of the agreement. Now, this is my fault, right? And then I missed the move from D.C. to New York in order to, 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 to make the record. I misplaced the, the, the contract. Now, all hope is not lost because I get a new lawyer, right? Because I couldn't find this cat that I had hired to get a copy. But I get a new lawyer. I write. But Storm has to give you a copy of the deal that you sent. But because I don't have a copy to bump up against what they sent back, that's when they send me this joint back. And it says, originally I signed my publishing, 50% of the publishing in advance for, I mean, 50% mm -hmm. uh, of the publishing I sell, and I was supposed to get back $10,000. But instead, they took away like four zeros, and the, and the paperwork said 50% of the publishing, you get a dollar. And so because I didn't have my copy of the contract to bump against that, it's like I had no leg to stand on because I couldn't find the other attorney. My paperwork is lost. So the only thing we got to go on is this paperwork right here. And that's a lesson mm -hmm. for you kids. You know what I'm saying? Keep up with your shit. You know what I mean? Keep keep up Hold with up. your paperwork. So, you know what I'm saying? So when you sign this and you sold your publishing, Guys, I don't know much, but when I hear all these rappers, for the people, this publishing sounds like a big deal. Yes. So why would you think giving that up for ten grand is good? Because Even you don't. Ten know. grand don't sound good to me. Because you don't know any better. See, you got to think back. In 1996, 96 when I signed my deal. I got out of college. I graduated from college in 92. And so I, and, and, and these are the issues that I encountered even to this day with a lot of these young artists. When you have a dream and an aspiration to get on, I told you, I have been trying to get on since the eighties. Now here comes an opportunity, Me too. right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah. So you, you feel that you told me you, you spit, right? So if you trying to get on, <laughs> I used to, I skipped. Okay, 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 okay. So not you, now, though. No. Not now, not now. Okay. I still give it to a few. I still give it to a few. Okay. okay. A <laughs> lot of these young cats, I give it to them. I give it to them. <laughs> I was just giving it to a young cat over Father's Day. I was giving. Oh, it to that's them. what's up. That's what you got to show them. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So when you're trying to get on, right, and finally there's an opportunity for you to get on. And then not only because you don't know about the business yet, right? You don't know anything about publishing. I don't know nothing about publishing. All I know is I want to be an LMC. And somebody, did you even know what it was when, when you did it? I sure didn't. I'll be honest with you. I sure didn't. I wouldn't know either. So it ain't nothing. So I'd be like, man, give me the. I just want the camera. Put it in front. <laughs> but I, that's how I was. And they're gonna give me ten grand for this thing called publishing that I still get to keep some of. I keep fifty percent, but I'm giving up fifty percent. For ten grand, and I'm and I'm and I'm fresh out of college, right? I'm dabbling in the street a little bit. I'm working at a grocery store. I'm doing. I'm saying I'm doing. You know this, that, the third hustling, da da da. And somebody gonna give me ten grand to 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 rap and to do something you do for free. And not only that, I still got the fifty up, the fifty grand too. Now fifty grand advance, so that's sixty grand to rap. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you would have did it for free. I'm taking that in a heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not knowing. You know what I mean? Not knowing. If you know, it's like, oh, this is the piece where you get to eat forever. This is money, income, and in perpetuity. You see what I'm saying? This is how mm -hmm. when you're when you're when when your career is done, you know what I'm saying, and you figure you don't want to rap no more, but your records are still getting played, that's how you eat. You know what I'm saying? So that doesn't that doesn't come, that knowledge doesn't come until later. That's the reason why I was like, oh, 10 grand, 50 percent. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Easy. All right. So you went from, I got to put this out there. You went from 10 grand you thought you was getting to a dollar. You got songs with B.I.G. at its peak. Yes. You around millionaires. Yes. Mingling with all of these people. Mm -hmm. So what is going through your mind? What is going through your heart, first of all, your heart? So... I see that, and I'm like, and that was really the trigger. That was like, damn, man, this shit dirty. So then I get dropped. After I see that, then, you know, maybe about a year or two later, I get dropped. And then it's like we're back to square one. I've been working. So now we're at 2001. I told you I've been trying to get the 
80, 80, 85, 86. So we talking like 16, what is that, 16, 17 years later, back at square one. I got a little bit of money in the bank, but that is going and that's dwindling down because I'm not trying to go get a gig. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To get another. I, now it's the point where, okay, if I can't get another deal, I'm going to do it independent. So I put out a single, you know, I moved mm-hmm. to Atlanta, put out a single, Marlon Wayne, that's my guy. He, he, fund, uh, 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 he funds this, this uh, a collaboration that we did, and I put out another single with an A and B side, shot a video and all that. But you quickly start to realize that without that major label backing, it's going to take a lot more bread to get back to where you once was when party time was popping and all this mm. shit. So the money is dwindling down. So mm. now we get down to seven dollars. Right? And I gotta I tell this story every time. Get down to seven dollars. I'm a real spiritual guy, right? So it's like, what do I do with the seven dollars? I can go get a meal, right? I can't go get a pack, but a plus I'm not trying to go do that anyway. So mm. what do I do? So I go to church and as a you know a symbolic gesture, I just put it in the pan and I just say, God, this is my this is my way of saying God help me handle this you know what i'm saying so i put it in there and then like a week after that i get a call from wayne barrow who's the president of Boston, who's mark pitt's cousin and he says yo uh universal has a check for you but they don't have an address to send it so mm-hmm. here's a number call them give them the address check so publishing check all right this is how we get that ten thousand back so then i give them a call they say address a week after i call him and give him that address i get a check in the mail for seven thousand mm-hmm. then a week after that i get another check in the mail for fifty seven thousand dollars Ooh, that gotta feel good man listen that's why i don't even get into discussions about faith and i ain't saying religion i'm saying faith and and being faith-based and believing in you know a higher power you know what I'm saying? I don't even get into the discussions because I know how my life is set up and how things worked out for me. So it's like whatever you believe in, you believe in. But I know what happens to me in my in my situation. Oh, I believe. You know what I'm saying? So I'm faith based too. Exactly. Highly dysfunctional, but I'm faith based. Hey, 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 listen, we I'm all moving on faith. We all dysfunctional, brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm trying to say. You know what I'm saying? I- all right, so continue. Continue on a journey. Yeah, this man. life is a journey. Yep. As Nipsey said, life is a marathon. So this is what I want people to know, and this is what I want the viewers to know. Yeah. Life is a journey. You started here, and it brings you here. That's it right. still can bring you at a place of peace. That's right. That's right. So we pay off some bills, you know what I'm saying? And that's when we get the revelation. Going back to not understanding the business at first, to now getting the knowledge of the business, you know what I'm saying, from an artist's perspective and understanding how it works. Now it's time for you to pay it forward. But 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 there's some credentials that, you know, this is, you know, again, me praying and this is the revelation. There's some, some credentials that you, you want to have for people to take you, you know, seriously. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're going to take mm-hmm. you seriously as an artist as well, but nobody it, ha, ha, has bought what you game, which is not experience of an artist but now you're going to go to law school you're going to get a law degree and then you're going to become you know probably the first major label artist to become an attorney so i went to law school in 2003 graduated 2006 passed the bar in 2007 and i've been a licensed attorney for the last 14 years along with still making records so that's what this journey did that's what these trials and tribulations did you got the money you got advances. Yep. Money yep. came in. You yep. know what I'm saying? You was at you was you know, you was at the bottom praying some to the higher power. Yeah. You needed miracles to happen. Yep. And miracles started happening because God yep. is good. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So so to repeat that, so then here comes the revelation of now you gotta pay your experiences forward. You know, all the trials and tribulations that you went through, it's time to pay it forward. That this is what God is telling me. Like, so after I pay off some bills with that money. It's like now, you know, what, what's your next move? Because you can't sit up here and, and, and attempt to take that money and try to put it all back into making records. You got to have mm-hmm. something else to go along with that. You know what I'm saying? And so, but mm-hmm. staying in the same realm, in the same vein. So that's when I had the revelation to go to law school. I went to law school in 2003. 
graduated in 2006, Southern University Law Center down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and then uh, pay, uh, uh, passed the bar in 2007. And I've been a licensed attorney for the last 14 years. So let me ask you, so was that a Machiavellian move? You really intentionally came back to the entertainment industry? That's right. That's that's So now... So now we are gonna go back and forth. So because you got your company now, yep. you know what I'm saying you and your wife got a company. Yep. I gotta ask a few questions because it's highly dysfunctional. Yes. So how is it working with your wife? Now, it is great, but it wasn't always great. You know what I'm saying because there's certain ideologies. First of all, it's your wife. Second of all, she's a woman, right? So you kind of think differently. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you look at things in a different perspective. But one, the one thing that, that, that helps us out a lot is that what my strengths are are her weaknesses and what her strengths are are my weaknesses. You know what I'm saying? So Sound like the, sound like the smash. Go ahead, keep going. Yeah, yeah. So, so Talking to the quiet. So, so that's the yin and the yang. You know what I'm saying? If you got the yin and the yang, especially when she and, and the other thing that helps us out is that we both entertainment, but it's on different sides of the spectrum because she deals with books. She deals with scripts, movies, things like that. My deal is the music and my deal is also now the legal. So whatever, again, whatever I don't have, she has and whatever she don't have, I have. So it's kind of like it, it works in sync. The only time we bump heads is based off of passion. Because she's very passionate about what she wants to do, and I'm very passionate about what I want to do. So it's really about which one is going to go first. And so that's what we've been able to work out for the last eleven years. It's like, okay, yeah, how did you do that? I mean, because we're not we're not we're not in a, a society that's is working things out and forgiving communication. You know, we're not in that society. So being that you know, as a black man. You know what I'm saying? We got to know. So how did you get to that? You, and you have a working relationship, and you got to go home and find your wife attractive. Yeah, yes, yes. After arguing yes. about business, and things get tense. You know, we all know. Yeah. It's, 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 and it's 11 years in now, so you're successful now. It's, it's communication. I'll tell you, it's two things. It's communication, and it's also, it's, it's age. Like, if this was a situation where we was in our 20s, I it would have lasted. But because, you know, she went through her whole ordeal or whatever life brought her up until the time that we decided to come together and same with me, it's kind of like you, you sifted out all of that kind of stuff that could have been detrimental to the relationship. You know what I'm saying? So the relationship always comes first. That's the, that's the main thing. Aside mm -hmm. from the business, aside from all of it, the relationship always comes first. And so that's what we've been able to, from a mutual perspective, understand. We can disagree about all this business shit at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, we can put that shit to the side and not let it interfere with our relationship. You know what I'm saying? It really shouldn't. Nah. So, so that's how we've been able, and it, and it really is constant communication. How do you feel? Like, don't try to harbor feelings and shit. Like, you spit it out. Like, that was one of the things we started from the beginning. What? Spit it out. Spit it out. Spit, spit it out. Look at me. So your version is different. My version be like, spit it out. Spit it out. Spit it out. Spit it out. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, I have a I'm just saying. Hey, two different ways to get to the same doubt, point. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> so, no, nah, man, but that's, that's, that's really the key, man. It's like, yo, whatever you feeling, say it. You know what I'm saying? Let's deal with it. Let's deal with it now. Let's not deal with it later. Let's not hold it in and all that other shit. Let's deal with it now. You know what I mean? For all you ladies, this is a successful married man. Been through ups and downs, triumphs and tragedies. And he telling you it's that simple. That simple. It's really it's that, that simple. That's all it is. Yep. Yep. Absolutely, bro. That's all it is. So now with your company now, what are you what are you planning to do with it? What you, what because you're doing it and what are we doing? I, the short film, yes. that is beautiful. It could have been a lot longer. Oh. You gotta hire me for something. I don't care if it's two minutes. Oh, I'm glad you was rocking with that. I'm living a dream. This is what I'm trying to do. Yes. I need help. It's yes. only me right now. That's how it is. Anybody that helps me in that hour. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Listen, we gotta talk then. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Uh, listen, this is what I'm trying to do. And when I'm from a small town, shout out to Rockland County, you haters. And listen, I'm on here with Trace. You here? We talking business. No doubt. How do you feel about that? No doubt. <laughs> well, look, yeah. So you know, we try to work things out, and I'm trying to do the same type of things you're talking about. And you are for the people. 
Yes. And we got all these up and coming artists, all these up and coming entertainers, writers, yep. uh, whatever they tell us, internet is, has shown us that we don't got to wait for nobody to, to, to co-sign. Nope. You co-sign yourself. Yep. And that's my message to my son. That's a you fact. Know what I'm saying? Like, yo, never mind that, man. Just how, do it, man. How's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How was your son? My oldest son is 21. He's a rapper. Shout out to Cyrus. Shout out to Official Raw Foreign. You know, we're, you know, we at odds right now. He, he about to make me a granddad again. And, oh. um, you know, but it's always the same message. Yeah. Like, just do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I'm doing this. And I'm, I fall in love with it anyway. So I'm dedicated. I ain't got nothing else to do but be dedicated. No it's almost the end. So this is it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We owed it. So this is it. We got, I guess it's my last arrival. So we going to make time. one more push at it. You know what I'm saying? I had my ups and downs in life. Like, I've been fighter. I've been... You know, I've been on the street. I had all my street glory. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I didn't try. You know, I didn't fail. I didn't went to prison. I didn't mm -hmm. came back. I didn't. That's what I'm saying. As a father, I came back. I didn't mm -hmm. failed again. I didn't came back. I didn't failed again. I didn't came back. And yeah, I want to be hugged for that shit. I don't want no gifts. They <laughs> hug me because it, it it hurts to come back. That's real rap, bro. That's it hurts to come back after you fail. So that's. That's what I'm saying. A lot of women don't understand that. Yep. After you make mistakes, a lot of brothers leave and never come back That's and show your kid like I made a mistake. That's a fact. So I'm here like, yeah, I made a mistake. Yep. Let's talk about it. Let's deal with it so you won't make the mistake. I still love you. That's right. And you can even tell me how you feel. That's right. You say one fuck, fuck dad, fuck dad. Dude. Let's talk about it. You know what I'm saying? You say, I'm not that person. I'm not that guy. Get it so out. shout out to the real. What do you want to, you know, What's for the people coming mm -hmm. and people wanting to get involved, people that don't know how to go that new direction, whether you're a rapper, because you're doing short films. And like I said, that shit should have been a lot longer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hope you take it further. And yeah. listen, hire me too. So yeah. what do you, what are what's the, what we talking about? How you, how you, how does this work? Um, how do we get in touch? How do we get involved in what you're doing? Okay. That's what I need to know. Listen, I'm glad you asked this question because, you know, for anybody that's trying to start a business out there, all your entrepreneurs, um, you know, one of the hardest things that you could you can do, you know what I'm saying, with regards to setting up your business, is finding people that are willing to participate, help, come on board, like-minded, with the same kind of energy, with the same kind of vigor, with the same type of tenacity, like that extremely hard to find a team. That 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 so it, that isn't you know so fixed on uh, self promotion, self uh, gain. You know what I'm saying? When you start talking about a team, it's really like the all for one, one for all concept. In order for the thing to move and win, if you try, you know, be half half ass with it, or you just trying to get like you know a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's like, I, I, you know, I've seen a whole lot of things come and go. I've seen a lot. I'm not interested in that. You know what I'm saying? Even if I got to be a player on somebody else's team, I want if I'm going to get down, I want to see the team win. It has to be a team concept. Everybody understanding their position. Everybody understanding what what they're bringing to the table and how it can help the whole so that said, You know, that's one of the things that we're definitely looking for at left because at the present just like you bro it's only me and my wife you know what i'm saying like you know we we, we have people that, that help us out sporadically and thank you for all the people that's out there. shout out the word of mouth you know what i'm saying uh, uh marketing who does a lot of stuff for us over on uh you know certain social media spaces man they, they've got us connected with a whole bunch of people that we wouldn't have been able to get hold of um but we're constantly looking for pieces that, okay, we got the same, the same type of synergy, same type of like, uh, what are your goals and objectives and how to come with what we're doing. So I would encourage everybody that if you have something going on and it doesn't take, you know, hundreds of people, it just takes, you know, that person, depending on what your aim is, to be effective in what they do and that it synergizes with what you're trying to do and you're all moving forward in the same direction. So what are you looking for? Oh man, right that's now. What I'm, that's what I want to know because okay, people got to get involved. It's all about a movement. It's all about a team. I can now, take. How can they get connected with some people? You know what I'm saying? I said up and comers need a home. Right now, it's really about marketing. It's about PR. 
It's about getting the word out. The content is there. We have people that can create the no, content. No, it's definitely there. I see some of the stuff you did is beautiful. Oh, thank you, brother. The content is there. It's just about getting in the spaces. You know what I'm saying? Getting in the spaces that I can't get in myself. You know what I mean? Or getting in the spaces while, you know what I'm saying, we are still creating the content. Because when you got to do all of it, Something's gonna, one thing is going to take away from the other. So you right. I try to tell people. Like, <laughs> sometimes I'm doing the lives, and sometimes I'm making jokes, yep. and then sometimes I'm on my YouTube game, which I'm older, so I'm not used to YouTubing. I'm not used to none of this stuff, so it's just me. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So people was like, yo, I, I'll get to your shit when, when I can. I got to go it. back and forth. Doing a hell of a job, man, because I could have swore you had some other people with you. That's some that crazy. Nah, nah, nah. I got whoever's here. I got whoever's here. People that love me, people that care for me, people that, you know, is is is, is trying just like me. Yes. And they trying to deal with me because this is my dream. So it's not theirs. So but, it's like, ah. But you know what? The, the thing is also, you have to be honest with yourself what your strength really is. Like, if you're not a, you know, and it's kind of on the subject, but not. But off. Oh, if, not, if you're not a, if listen, if you're trying to rap, and I know it's subjective, but if you're trying to rap and you're not that good, be honest with yourself. But that doesn't mean that you have to go away from the industry. There are mm -hmm. things that you might have a better strength at that you can bring to the table to something else that's coming down the pipeline or that you can get involved with. Same thing with somebody that, you know, if, if you're not a musician, right? If you're not really that dope, right? Then there's something else within the entertainment industry that you can do. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be in front of the camera to be effective and to be known if that's what you're looking for, fame and all that other shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I think a lot of people get caught up in that. Find a space within the entertainment industry that you like, right, that you love, I mean, I say like, that you love, that you can bring to the table that could be an asset to a movement that a lot of rappers, I've got a lot of, and I'm saying rappers, I'm not saying MCs, but got a lot of rappers out there. Oh, what's the difference? What's the difference? Oh, you tell me what the difference is. I don't know. I don't, I don't rap. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you <laughs> when do. I was a kid, I was a rapper. Yeah, I don't do. rap now. You know the difference. I'm a, <laughs> I want you to tell me. Uh, I want you to <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So listen, so being that, that you're a lawyer now and you went through everything you went through and you still wasn't able to recover all your rights to your records, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, okay, so from a business perspective, once the label paid for those records, they are really their records, but they don't own the lyrics. You mm -hmm. know? I can strip the, away the lyrics, and those lyrics will still be mine, and I'll own those. You know what I'm saying? I really only own one album. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So everything else that I do from here on in is all mine. So as long as I can take my lyrics, I can actually cut the record over again. That's another thing. Hey, you know hey, you looking in to do that? You nah, ain't to tell me. Nah, nah. We, we move forward, man. Like, Why not? Like, I mean, because they can have that, yo. They, I mean, I could, to be honest, right? If it wasn't for that, I look at the, the silver lining and everything. If it wasn't for that situation, we wouldn't be talking right now. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I got what I needed to get out of that. I got you know, a little bit of notoriety, which is not important, but it's enough that... You got a lot more than that. Well, okay, so if you want to say that, <laughs> then that means whatever I do moving forward, there's going to be an interest there based off of what we've been. Uh, on, as far as the foundation, you know what I'm saying? So that particular album, or that particular record, it's all good. They pay for it. They can have it. You know what I'm saying? Was that the worst business deal you ever signed? That was the only deal I ever signed. Ever again? That's the only deal I ever signed. Ever again? Ever again. Only, only, uh, they, 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 I'm not going to say ever again. But, but because I'm an attorney now. Credit card deals are deals. Yeah, but I never bought a, I never bought a car. <laughs> I've never bought a car. So where would you get the car from? I lease cars. See? All right. What is that, better? Oh, yeah, for me, because it's a write-off. Mm -hmm. See, this is, this is the thing about business. You put it under your company. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you can't get 
you can't write off mileage and you can't write off the gas as much, you know what I'm saying, by mm -hmm. buying a car if you have an LLC. See, I have an LLC. I put everything under my business. You know what I'm saying? So, so as far as signing a deal, I, I've only signed one deal in my life, and that was that. Dude, that was the worst shit ever. <laughs> For me. <laughs> it actually was the best because it made you who you are today. You know what I'm saying it wasn't, it wasn't, it, it was the only deal. I'm not going to say it was the worst, the only deal. But that deal, like you just said, put me in a position. It put me in a position for us to be able to have this conversation. It put me in a position for me to go to law school. It put me in a position to be able to do a record with Big, do a record with Buster, do do songs with Kanye West. So that that deal wasn't bad at all. No, nah, it wasn't. It nah. wasn't. Now that you look at it, when you listen to you talk, no, nah, it wasn't. No, nah. it wasn't. Nah. When you think about the journey of life, yep. and when you tell them the story, and this is what it's all about, because I heard something about, I read some of the interviews, we talk about stories, and that's what I'm all about. I'm here to tell a story, you know what I'm saying? So, and this is this is what it's all about. And and I'm, eventually, I want to grow the company, business, getting people involved. But right now, I'm just talking, entertaining people, being my normal self. So that's yeah. what we're trying to grow to. That's why I ask you these questions. And, yeah, yeah. and it's probably for me, and not only for me, for every other up and coming rapper, artist that need representation, I need to know what's going on and how to handle themselves. You know, you know when it's a bad deal. Like I, this is what I deal with now. Like they have up and coming uh, artists, up and coming artists that I deal with. Right? It's a bad deal when legal re representation like myself, who can kind of spot things that are coming down the pipeline a mile away, based off my experiences. Not only you know, what I'm saying as a, as as legal representation but also as an artist and you give the advice to the artist right and you tell them not a good deal i don't think you but you can't tell them don't i mean you can tell them don't sign it but they still have to make the decision. they but got when, they get to make the ultimate decision but when they sign that deal regardless of what you say that's a bad deal and that happened i told this I told this artist I don't think she signed this deal, but because of her anxiety, but because she was anxious, she signed it anyway. And then a month later, she was like, damn, because you helped me get out of it. I said, are you kidding me? I should have been told you, don't sign it now in a, in a month. It only took a month. Now you want out. So I was like, you got to eat that. So is there any artist that you can say that you represent that we can know about? Um. Well, I can't know nothing. No, 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 no. <laughs> but but I've done work for Solange. I've done work for Kelly Rowland. I've done work for a company that represented the late great Kobe Bryant. I've done and do work for you know on on a case by case basis for Young Guru, who is you know uh, Jay Z's engineer as well as his tour DJ. I've, Shout out to Young Guru. Yeah. Shout I've, out to the real. No doubt, I, I, I do work for uh, done work for Eric Robeson, who's probably the biggest uh, independent R and B artist. You know what I'm saying? There is been R and B uh, independent artist for 20 years, uh, who's written for damn near everybody that you know. Um, I've done work for Algebra Blessed. I've done work. Um, uh, who else? But but yeah, those are just to name a few. You know what I'm saying you named enough. We named enough. These yeah. are people. These are questions that I was pre asked already. Okay. So. Yeah. I got the pre act stuff right here. <laughs> so let me ask you. So, so, I just functional. <laughs> so, right now, right? Yeah. Right now. Your glory's out right now. Mm -hmm. You got plans for more albums. Yep. The book is out too. The book is out too. I can't wait to get a copy. We got to keep reminding people. Tell people how to get it real quick right here. Because this is. I'm marketing them always marketing because I'm at the bottom. So I need all these sound bites. Mark it up right here. Love it. Tracy Lee Music.com. That's T R A C E Y L E E Music.com. We got Glory to Music. We got Glory to Manuscript. We got Glory to Movie that we're currently doing with each video. Then we're going to have Glory to Monologue, which is going to be the stage show. So we're putting all of the M's together. Music. Oh, and Glory to Merch. So we got the music. The manuscript, the merch, the movie, and the monologue. Tracy Lee Music .com. Get it all. It's all there. You know what I'm saying? And you can find Tracy Lee .com. 
Yeah, so shout out to the Reels. Let me ask, we got to take it back real quick. So, because I need all this footage. So, <laughs> so, yeah. so what about the community right now? Because yeah. a lot of your stuff, I mean, you know, I, your message is different now. Yeah. But it's still lyrical. Yeah. You still giving the business. You still get, I mean, you sound great. Thank I'm you, very bro. impressed. Appreciate so, it. And how I'm, do you feel it relates to the times right now? And I'm 50. You know what I'm saying? But I'm 50 doing this. And I was wrong with black people. I want to say that. When they put, we put the age limit That's right. on how how much we can do things as blacks. That's right. They don't do that with white people. It's Ozzy Osbourne, all the cats, ugly ass Mick Jagger, <laughs> yeah. all these motherfuckers is touring today about to die. That's right. People are going crying over them. Yep. But we don't let our stars age gracefully right. and win gracefully, man. Exactly. And we got to talk about that. But, but go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. You're talking about the community. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the community. So we talk about the community. We talk about the thing. How do you feel about the community? How do you feel about about what's going on today? Yeah. It's not so much about what you're doing. You can talk about them. I just want to know about what you see, what your eyes see, and what you deal with. Nah, man. You know, I mean, a lot of things came out that was, you know, a lot of things came out in the wash last year. You know what I'm saying? A lot of things that was there. It was. I mean, I think Will Smith said it, man. It, it, it's all been here. It's just now we're able to record it with the camera, with the phone. You know what I'm saying? We got it. You know, it's accessible. Twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. You can catch it, catch it live and in color. You know what I'm saying? It's not like it was in disguise. It wasn't hidden anywhere. It's just that we didn't have the opportunity to capture it in real time. But racism mm -hmm. is, is, is prevalent. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, uh, 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 black folks with regards to our internal situations are prevalent, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, the systematic situation, not only with, with racism, and, and also all of the systemic racism, we're talking about education, you're talking about economics, you're talking about, you know, the mental health, you know what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to our community, these are the things that, that, that really revealed itself in 2020. It revealed itself during the pandemic. It revealed itself, you know, during that tragic moment. But it also forced us to look at square in the eye. And it forced us to say, how are we going to deal with this? How are we going to come out of this? How are we going to move forward with this? Are we going to allow it to eat us alive? Or are we going to allow this particular, take the, take the, the time and take advantage of the situation, address it, you know what I'm saying, take it head on and, and, and enable ourselves to move forward collectively. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, we, we, we've been dealing with trauma, man, shit, since we've been over here. We're talking about 400, 500 years. That's a lot. To it's a lot to unpack and it's a lot to get through. You can't get through it overnight. There's too many years and too many layers, but you have to look at it square in the eye and you got to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? I think it's too long we have to step you know what I mean? So that's where, you know, doing music is therapeutic. It's therapeutic for me, and hopefully it's therapeutic for anybody that's listening to it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm starting to hear a lot more people coming aware of these situations and creating, you know, not only just music, but any type of, uh, 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 from a creative aspect. Even what you're doing with highly dys dysfunctional, like these conversations, are, these, th these conversations are therapeutic to be able to talk about it. To be able to put it in, in, in you know, on front street, to be able to put it on the table and address it, you know what I'm saying? To have a one on one conversation with people about it where we wouldn't have these conversations before. Like, these are the things that I look at, and these are the things that I want to, with, especially with the music, bring it to the forefront so that we can do mm -hmm. properly. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, between party time and when you had to transfer to what you're doing now, did any of your friends, you know, turn it back on? To, to turn my turn it back? Nah, I wouldn't say that. But I think, you know, at the time we're talking about thirty years ago, people were in a different space. You know, most of us we were kids. I mean, yeah, we were all kids. You know what I'm saying? Like early twenties, you still a kid. You don't know shit. You know what I mean, so, now, nah, man, shout out to the real high dysfunctional man. I appreciate you having me on here, man. Again, for all everything Tracy Lee, go to tracyleemusic.com, Tracy, T-R-A-C-E-Y-L-E-E, -E -E, music.com. Appreciate you, my brother. Thank you, King. I appreciate you, man. This yeah. has been highly dysfunctional. I hope y'all learned something. If you didn't, hit them up. 
We gonna market this thing forever. This is the summertime. Shout out to the real, highly dysfunctional Tracy Lee. It's been a fucking experience. Excuse my language. It's no. been an experience. Peace, King. <laughs> Peace, dead, dead. Love. Love.